Hi, it's Father Jeremiah, and I'm here to give you a collect reflection, but it's not for the collect we just prayed this past Sunday. I didn't get a chance to record a collect reflection for last week, and the collect of the day for that week was phenomenal, and I wanted to come back and record a reflection on it, even though we're not using it this week. We used it last week, throughout the week. But I just want to talk about this colic because it's just phenomenal. And before we get into that, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and hit the share button and share this on social media wherever you happen to be. And that helps our channel to grow and helps you to know what we're doing and helps others to discover us more and more. And so with this collect, this collect is proper number 12 in our prayer book for the season after Pentecost and is used for the week of Sunday, of the Sunday from July 24th to the 30th. You can find it on page 618 of the 2019 Book of Common Prayer. And let's Pray this one together. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Like I said, this prayer is amazing. I love it. It's a prayer that goes back to our 1662 prayer book. It is part of the prayer book tradition for the last over 400 years, and it's always been in use. It's always been one that's been prayed every year since at least 1662. I didn't think to check the previous versions, the, uh, but it's a great prayer. Let's listen to that. We're telling God that he is one of his great attributes is that he is more ready to hear than we are to pray. How amazing is that? That he wants to hear us pray. He wants us to come to him and call out to him. That is a great, wonderful, beautiful characteristic of who God is. He desires to hear us. That he is always ready to hear us. Even when we're not ready to pray, he is ready for us to pray to him. In addition to that, he is more ready to give. He wants to give us more than what we could ever desire or what we deserve. We don't deserve anything from God. And so right there from the get-go, we don't deserve to receive anything from God. So there, yes, he's definitely more ready to give than we deserve. But he's even more ready to give and more desirous of giving than we even, than we even desire. Those are beautiful truths about who God is that we should cling to, that we should make a part of our daily lives to be thinking about that God wants to hear us pray more than we want to pray. And he wants to give more than we could possibly desire or what we even deserve. He wants to give us his kingdom, the fullness of his grace, the fullness of redemption, the complete renewal of us physically and spiritually. That is his greatest and most glorious gift that he desires to give us in Jesus Christ. But do we ever desire that that much? Do we really dwell on that that readily, that he is renewing us inside and out continually? And he gives us everything else. Like James says, all good things come from God. God gives us everything that we have. So whether we desire it or deserve it, God has given us all good things that we need. And so in light of the fact that God is more ready to hear us than we are to pray, that he is ready to give more than we could ever desire or deserve, we cry out, pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy. Pour upon us your mercy, your grace grace, your compassion, because we don't deserve anything. We are sinners. So pour down upon us our, your mercy in abundance. And it's mercy because it's the kindness of God. It's what we don't desire. It's what we don't deserve. So therefore, it's mercy that we're asking for God to give us. And in light of that mercy, we pray for forgiveness. Forgive us those things of which our conscience is afraid. I, I love that phrasing. Those things of which our conscience is afraid. We have sins in our lives that can be so great or so repetitive that we wrestle with, that we struggle with, that our conscience just becomes afraid to even bother asking for forgiveness anymore for that one sin. But here we're saying, forgive us those things of which our conscience is afraid. Those things that startle us, that scare us, that surprise us, that are a part of our sin nature, that we're afraid to ask God to forgive. We confess we have so many sins in our lives that we are don't know about, that are hidden from our eyes, that our conscience doesn't understand. And so we're praying with this prayer, forgive us those things of which our conscience is afraid. Forgive us, Lord, for the things that we don't even realize we're doing or the things that we're just simply too afraid, too scared to ask about. We need you, O oh Lord, to forgive us. And I love that phrase again. 
of which our conscience is afraid. And then we confess that he is giving us those good things, that he gives us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ. And right there is the crux of everything. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, giving us those good things. So there's his mercy, giving us those good things that we're not worthy to ask. In and of ourselves, we don't deserve to ask for God, ask God of anything. We don't deserve it because we're sinners. We're sinners through and through, and that's the reality. But yet God has given us Jesus. And so we cry out, forgive us those things our conscience is afraid of. And give us those things that we're not worthy to ask, except for the sake of Jesus, except that it's through his merits and his mediation, his actions on our behalf to go to the cross, to take our sins upon himself, and to die, to be resurrected and ascend into heaven. And in our passage from this past week, Ephesians 4, it talks about that Jesus ascended in order that he would pour out gifts upon his people, that he gives good gifts to his people. And it's because of his merit and his mediation that we can receive these things. And so I wanted to just go over this prayer and talk about and just dwell in it, that God is ready to hear you pray. If you don't think God cares about you, this prayer contradicts that thought. All of Scripture contradicts that thought. Go look at Scripture. God desires us to pray. He tells us to call out to Him, to pray to Him. Jesus says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. God desires you right now to pray to Him, to look to Him, to cry out to Him, and He will give you what you need. He will give you more than you desire, more than you would deserve, because he is a God of grace and mercy who wants to shower upon his people in Jesus his goodness. And so cling to this prayer. Make it a part of your regular routine of praying. I think this prayer should be added to morning prayer, honestly. I mean, it's just such a good prayer. And so you can go back and use it any time of the year. It doesn't have to just be saved for that week after July 24th. It can be used any time of the year. So Pick up this prayer, pray it some this week, make it part of your routine, and in a day or so, I'll have another video, Collect Reflection for the Collect for this week, proper number 13. It's a good prayer, too. It's just, this one just really gripped me, and I wanted to share with you the excitement that this prayer gives me. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen.